Hi, welcome to NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions that you have related to fire, electrical, and life safety. With easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. So one of the most common questions we get here at NFPA when it comes to protection of storage using NFPA 13 is, how do pallets affect commodity classifications? It's important to understand that pallets can pretty drastically change the fire load of a commodity. Let's take a look over in chapter 20 to see the requirements. So chapter 20, we have general requirements for storage, and let's go over to chapter 20, section 20.3, classification of commodities. So we're in 20.3, and let's scroll down to 20.3.2, pallet types. All right, so this first section is pretty standard. It says, when loads are palletized, the use of wood or metal pallets, or listed pallets equivalent to wood, shall be assumed in the classification of commodities. This is because wooden pallets are used when we figure out the commodity classifications of products. So that's already assumed to be in there. So the addition of a wood pallet or metal pallet or anything equivalent isn't going to affect your commodity classification. But here we have a pallet having any portion of its construction consisting of a plastic material that's not been listed to the equivalent of wood shall increase the commodity determined for a storage load in accordance with sections 23221 or 23222, which we'll talk about next. All right, so there's two different types of plastic pallets. There's reinforced plastic pallets and unreinforced plastic pallets. So here we say plastic pallets that have no secondary reinforcing shall be treated as unreinforced plastic pallets. And then for class one through four commodities, when unreinforced polypropylene or unreinforced high density polyethylene plastic pallets are used, the classification of the commodity unit shall be increased one class. So a class one is gonna turn into a class two, a class two to a class three, a class three to a class four, and a class four to a class A. Here we have unreinforced polypropylene or unreinforced high density polyethylene plastic pallets shall be marked with a permanent symbol to indicate that the pallet is unreinforced. If we don't see that symbol, then we're gonna have to assume that it is reinforced. Um, here we go, it's just a plastic pallet incorporating a secondary reinforcing material, such as steel or fiberglass, within the pallet is gonna be considered a reinforced plastic pallet. And I'll skip down here too, it says pallets shall be assumed to be reinforced if no permanent marking of the manufacturer's certification of non-reinforcement is provided. So again, we're gonna to default to assuming it's going to be a reinforced plastic pallet if we can't find any information telling us otherwise. Here we have for class one through class four commodities, when reinforced polypropylene or reinforced high density polyethylene plastic pallets are used, the classification of the commodity unit shall be increased two classes except for a class four commodity, which shall be increased to a cartoned, non-expanded group A plastic commodity. So again, instead of one class, it's gonna go two classes for a reinforced plastic pallet. Here it says no increase in the commodity shall be required for group A plastic commodities, since that's already kind of the most extreme commodity that we have. This right here is an interesting detail that not a lot of people are aware of, that for sealing only sprinkler protection, so not using in-rack sprinklers, these requirements shall not apply where plastic pallets are used and where the system sprinkler system uses spray sprinklers with a minimum K factor of 16.8. Uh, so again, these larger K factors, you're not gonna have to take this into consideration. Here, the requirements of these sections shall not apply to non-wood pallets that have demonstrated a fire hazard that's equal or less to wood pallets and are listed as such. So if you have some sort of plastic material that's been tested and shown, hey, this burns just like wood, or hey, it burns like metal because it doesn't burn, then you're allowed to use those and not have to do those increases in commodities. So when we look at plastic pallets other than polypropylene or high density polyethylene, you saw those were called out specifically in the requirements above. Uh, so what happens when you're not using those? So 
For class one through class three commodities stored on plastic pellets that are not those polypropylene or high density polyethylene, the classification of the commodity unit is shall be determined by a specific testing conducted by an approved testing laboratory or shall be increased two classes. So again, that one class know, addition is going to be bumped up to a two class if it's not polypropylene or high density polyethylene, even if it's non-reinforced. And here for class four commodities stored on plastic pellets, other than those polypropylene or high density polyethylene, uh, the classification shall be increased to a cartoned non-expanded group A plastic commodity, which is kind of uh, one of those higher ones. And then finally, we just have a requirement here that talks about slave pallets. So slave pallets are these flat wooden pallets that uh, you know you might put on the bottom of the product so they can go on rollers and things like that. So where solid flat bomb combustible pallets are used for rack storage of class one through class four commodities up to 25 feet in height in combination with CMDA sprinklers, we have a certain section that's gonna apply. So we click on this section here and see that this, this section uh, indicates the densities that are indicated based on conventional pallets shall be increased 20% for the given area, which is pretty significant. And then right here, this figure is gonna show us a little bit of what we mean when we say a slave pallet, which is a solid flat bottom wooden pallet. So this is going to not allow water to travel through it because it's gonna be a, a flat piece of wood. And I think that's going to be one of the reasons why we want that 20% increase. All right, so hopefully that provides some insight into how pallets affect commodity classifications. For more info about how NFPA Link gives you the knowledge you need to get the job done right, visit nfpa.org link.